So Steve, I will turn it to you if everybody will welcome you. And uh, did you want to remark on questions? Um, well, I, I think it might, might be easier if we do it at the end. Um, I know some okay. people are going to have some additional resources and things to add. So let's uh, save it for the end and I think we can go over Okay, very more. good. And then the rest of us, we will uh, mute and uh, you're on, Steve. Okay, thanks. So I, you know, my first love is the Pennsylvania Postal History Society. I have to be open and honest about that, right? And I invite everybody to join, um, whether you're a stamp collector or a postal historian, uh, we welcome everyone. We have a really awesome publication, The Historian. Uh, I see that there are several members already on. Vic Goldberg's on one of our directors, a longtime you know, board director and everything. So it's, it's really a great organization and um, a wealth of knowledge for sure. And I found that out when I did my transition, uh, some people do, maybe some people don't. When I transitioned kind of from stamps to postal history, I found that what a wealth um, it is out there. There's so many people that know so much more, sometimes off the top of their head, kind of like Charlie, you know, and there's all the stamp stuff off the top of his head. Now there's guys that, you know, Transatlantic, you know, Rick Livy and guys, that I ask them questions and they already know the answers to all that. And I have to go through three or four books. So what I've done in, in you know, as I've uh, learned how to do that a little bit is I've also collected resources instead of just the covers. So I hope it's going to be helpful to you down the road. I do have a, a website. Um, I'm sorry, I should say I have a site where I keep all these, a repository on Bubble Up. If you're interested, please let me know. Um, just email me. My email is going to be on the presentation. And um, just let me know. And you can join in the folder. And I have it broken down. Uh, Charlie can verify because you guys even actually use it to store some of your stuff. And I'm more than happy uh, you know, for clubs that need space to store things. Um, Ron Bresnay is using it for uh, Wyoming Valley and they're putting up their documents and things that they have from their club. So it's a, it's a way to collaborate and everything and it's free and it's easy and it's safe. I haven't had any issues with it. And you can see, you can put in there who can see what, like if you have, you know, treasurer report that you don't want everybody to see or whatever it might be, you can make it so only a couple of people can, but I'd be happy to work with you on that. And uh, I'd love to share it because it has even more, many, many more resources than this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share, and hopefully we get that done right. You can see okay. Um, Looks good, Steve. We can okay. see. Okay, it is okay. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to go through here. The first thing I want to talk about, and uh, um, please forgive me. I know some of you are much more advanced than I am, even on this. But just to start out, um, in my mind, I'm starting a new website, and I started thinking about well, there's some people that really don't know a whole lot about the terminology, phraseology, things we say and do within postal history. So I said, well, here's a good place to start. Just a little primer on a sampless folded letter. Some of the things we're talking about. As Paul had mentioned, I uh, do have a, quite a large collection of Eli Beatty stuff, and probably anybody that's involved in postal history has probably heard of him and, you know, uh, have seen things. You might not have noticed it, but he's out there. Very prolific, over 10,000 covers out there that were found in Hagerstown, Maryland. So um, the things that I'm looking for when I see, uh, like, the, the cover behind me or these covers here, you know, some people take things at face value. I really get in deeper and I try to think about every little artifact is the word that I'm using for each of these things, like the postmark or the manuscript rate. Uh, to the average person, that doesn't look like a 12 there, right? Some of the 18 and three quarters or the, you know, the halves and the different things, those guys were really marking them quickly. And I've had to ask people sometimes, you know, even though you know the time frame that it comes from, this doesn't look anything like what it's supposed to. Well, uh, it's even worse sometimes in Europe. They had even crazier ones. But so uh, sometimes you'll see something on there about enclosures. Uh, I am, uh, I'd like to thank Jesse Spector, who writes a lot of articles. Some of you guys may know about him. Uh, he, told, he introduced me to the concept of social postal history. And as we mentioned there, you know, the person that wrote the letter and the person that received the letter, there are a lot of interest to me because sometimes you find some really famous people or interesting people and they're in an interesting topics. So I always check to see, you know, the address and I check to see uh, the heading up there, you know, what bank in particular, this was a bank letter, right? What bank it came from? Who was the uh, cashier at the bank that sent it to Eli Beatty? You know, you have your saluta salutations in there. Sometimes they're very interesting, like dear sir is very easy, uh, but some like the complimentary close, yours respectfully or yours you know, uh, your obedient servant. There's all different kinds of things. And uh, I try and grasp each of those. And I think there's interest in each of those. 
And in the body, it's a little bit difficult to read some of these sometimes for sure. And especially with foreign languages, trying to translate is a little difficult. The APS does have a translation service. And um, for uh, things that are in English, I have a guy that works uh, with me, does a great job. He advertises in the historian. His name is uh, Jeff. And for $6 a page, he will look over everything. He knows this stuff inside and out. Within one day, he'll turn it around and give you a whole transcript of Microsoft Word. He types it all out. And it's pretty amazing what he can glean from this. Sometimes my head just hurts trying to look at some of the stuff that's in the body of the letter. So, and uh, up at the top there, you know, one of the things too, especially Pennsylvania, you'll see a lot of this Quaker stuff, like the first month or, you know, key words like the, thou, friend, you know, things like that that you're looking for. And it, it helps you when you're researching things to know, um, you know, some of those types of things, you can know where to look a little bit better. And down underneath the cover, one of the things I put, and this is just my own way of doing it, anybody can do it the way they'd like to, but, um, this is from Merrill. There's a, a Tom Clark is like the Philadelphia cancellation guy. He's like the guru for most of the stuff I do. But in Maryland, Kendall and Powers are the guys, right? They wrote the books on these postmarks in Maryland. So I put the number there, the earliest known usage, the latest, the size of it in millimeters, the different colors, how many were found, pricing and scarcity. It just helps me um, to keep track of all the things that uh, you know, that I come across. And that's just for Maryland. And there's different books for a lot of different states. I have I have quite a few of them. So if anybody has something they're looking for, I, I may be able to help with that or I'll, I'll find you some. So that's how I kind of start. And I look here like this, this 12 cent rate up at the top left, as you see there, I, I one of the first things and we'll, we'll come across this here very quickly is a rate chart. And you know, you look at the different years and what were the rates for the different distances at you know, those times, because you want to narrow these things down and you see a 12 there, well, you know, it has to be a double rate because it was only six cents really from Hagerstown to Frederick. It's not very far, less than 30 miles. So it helps you a little bit to figure the distances and uh, figure out um, why the rates are what they are. So here's, here's another cover that I had. This looks very confusing. But to me, it's tremendously interesting. So I, of course, I have to grab those. And a lot of these, the thing that's really cool about this hobby, you can get them from five bucks to 5,000 or 50,000, right? Some of these are $5 covers. This is really, really interesting to me because it was forwarded, right? You have the forwarded straight cancel there, straight line cancel. And it was originally sent to Boston, but ended up in Charlestown in Massachusetts. And of course, so I'm wondering, well, why is it say 20, 10? Why is the total 30? And who is this? What, what is this guy, GRB Horner? And you, oh, it turns out it was USN, right? The guy was a naval officer, right? You have the frigate Savannah, and he was actually in that area, but he wasn't in Boston. He was in Charleston. So it was 20 cents to start with, and then they had to put the other 10 cents to, to forward it on. Those are the things tremendously interesting to me. I have a Philadelphia cancellation on there, a Boston cancellation. This is like my bread and butter. This is the stuff I love, right? So I go through and I uh, make uh, something that looks like this. And, you know, you can do it however you want. Actually, Charlie's the one that gave me this idea originally. He had some templates uh, for some Word documents on how to capture information from different things. And I'm like, well, I, okay, I'm going to kind of make it my own. And what I did is I, you know, I'll scan the front and back of the cover and, you know, the inside of it with any letter that's in there. And then I capture what I call these artifacts and I try and research them. I know it's probably a little bit difficult to see there, but this PowerPoint is going to be available to you. And there's a lot of links in it. Um, so Charlie has it as a PDF. And I don't know if you guys want to store it as a PowerPoint or whatever, but you'll be able to look at this a little bit more closely. So I kind of color code things, you know, that mean things to me. I have some dates up there, you know, where it start, where it went, where it went to, where it was forwarded to. And uh, I print this out on a card stock paper and I actually don't put the artifacts on there. I just print those and then the, the actual cover itself. I use those little corner uh, clips, the, the clear ones you can see through um, the company company's name is Herma, H-E-R-M-A. I love those. They work very well. And I'll put that on the, uh, the piece of uh, paper there, the cardstock, written on the back with the, the letter. And then I just insert it in a plastic um, uh, in 
I don't know what you call it, right? The plastic thing you put it in the three ring binder, right? And I can put it in there. Uh, Rick Livey actually showed me about using file folders. So I have the big ones where I just put them down instead of having more binders because I have quite a few binders. I don't have uh, bookcase space. So that's kind of like what mine's going to look like after I'm done. This, this is where the letters, this is the guy, Jeff, that I was talking about. He, he translated, I mean, he transcribed all this for me, not translated, but um, so I print it out and make it look pretty. And then on the right, you know, put a little information about uh, the person that we were talking about. So it's uh, kind of interesting, you know, he was on the, the different ships. So that was a six page one. And that's for stampless stuff. Of course, on stamp envelopes, uh, this is another envelope that you would look at. And, you know, sometimes it might look kind of common, but there's a lot to research on here and things that I still haven't found the answers to. But, uh, you know, you have this label on the back, letter returned by carrier. That's pretty cool, right? You know, I see a thing like that, right? You have these New York postmarks. You have a Philadelphia postmark, New York here, return to writer, cannot, uh, I forget what that says there, cannot be found, cannot be found. You got red crayon in here. You got pencil notes, you know, and it's coming from somewhere in Broadway with human hair. I mean, this is amazing to me. And this is probably like a $20 cover, right? And I, I could spend a week researching this and just absolutely love every little part of it. So once again, I did my little thing with the artifacts, you know, separated them out. You can go into as much detail as you'd like. And I put the front and the back because there's so much information in there, right? And who it was sent to. So... Once I actually start researching things, um, I don't want to just read off a list here, but there are some things that, like in particular for Philadelphia, there's McElroy's. Maybe some of you have heard of some of these different city directories. Very interesting, and it's very uh, comprehensive, and there's a tremendous amount of it available. One of the very first places I go to look is Google Books, because these uh, the, the, the years I'm looking for are in the 1840s, 50s, or earlier, you know, and all that stuff's up there. There's books written up there and it's all free and you can download those. So um, when you go to it, when uh, Charlie ha has this uh, done, these are all clickable links. So if you click on the city directories, it'll take you to um, a place where you can look for those. Uh, Facebook has been actually a pretty good resource for me. I think that there's some people that don't really particularly care for Facebook. Um, you know, so you stay away from the things you don't like, but there's a lot of people that know a lot. Charlie is one of those people. He answers questions every day, all day. And it's very cool. And I've had people from different countries that have chimed in when I've asked questions. So there are some really good Facebook groups out there. And I would, I would definitely recommend looking at those as a resource because you're not going to be an expert on everything, but somebody out there knows about it. Um, one of my other favorite things are um, historical and genealogical societies. They have a lot of information out there, and there's whole tons of information written about just individual families. So you can find the, the stuff you're looking for. Of course, everybody knows about Google Search, but Google Books is that part where you can really download. Uh, and not everything is free and, and downloadable, but a lot of the stuff is. So you definitely want to look there libraries, um, newspapers. We'll go into a little more detail as we go down through some of these, where some of these places are, and some are online, and some are actually live, and, you know, and our, of course, philatelic literature, um, you know, the Classic Society, uh, Carriers and Local Society, based on what you're looking for, um, the, that's worth the price of membership, to me at least, anyway, just to be able to research their past articles. Uh, my, my goal is always, I don't want to start from the beginning, you know, I, I'd love to see things that people have already researched. Um, it's, it saves you time and gives you more uh, ability to do others, right? So, you know, you have your philatelic organizations and websites, postal museums, state historical societies. So I, uh, <laughs> it's funny, I was talking the other day about this. Um, I, um, Dan um, Tellup has said, well, why don't we send out letters to all the state historical societies and genealogical societies? I said, well, Dan, I already did that one time and I figured out, you know, I shouldn't have volunteered for that because it turned out there were 473 of them just in Pennsylvania. So there's a tremendous amount of them out there and they're, they're more than happy to help. Actually, uh, we've had some of our members that have gone to some of their meetings and offered membership in our society and vice versa. And it's been uh, very helpful. So, and of course, the post office is always going to be a place that uh, you can find uh, resources. So, 
as I was saying, um, and if, if you guys ever looked at La Posta, they have some things that are pretty cool with, uh, they're like uh, cheat sheets, if you will. And you can buy those very inexpensively. They have like three of them for like $10 and it has all kind of information about things. Well, so I've made some of my own cheat sheets. I've looked at, you know, uh, different places and looked at rates for domestic letters from certain time frames. This is just one example of it. I, I use others, but, you know, I might print something like this out and, um, you know, put it in a binder so I can look at it right away or, you know, have, have it close at hand because I can't remember all these. Uh, I don't know, maybe you guys can, but uh, it's, it goes, it goes into, you know, a lot of detail, so I can't remember them all. But here's several different places, you know, where you can get them for different years. And like I said, as you can see, I'm hovering over this and it's showing up as a hyperlink here. So when you click on it, you'll be able to go there and find out the different rates. And that's always important. So um, as we had mentioned earlier, you know, Charlie was talking about rates, routes, markings. Of course, they're the things we're always looking for. So routes, so I figured, well, I know a little bit about this stuff. And well, the more I, the more I think I know, the less I actually do. And I started looking at some of these books and um, these are actually online. Uh, the first two there, um, Hugh Feldman, I mean, or first three, I'm sorry. They're really great books. And uh, the Chicago Collectors Club, they have them for sale online. You can buy a digital version of those. Or of course, you could, you could buy the regular book. But, you know, I started thinking in my, my mind, you know, when you're talking about routes by water, well, I'm thinking transatlantic, transpacific. Okay. Well, that's not the end of it, right? As we all know, there's inland waterways. There's so many different ways that mail was moved that you, you don't even think about. So these um, first couple books are really uh, awesome um, uh, resources. This Across the Oceans, that's a, um, this young lady, she's a, the editor now of, um, the Postal History Journal, I believe that's what she does, but she wrote a whole book. And um, I actually have a link to a PDF version of that, which is really, really good. I, I have the hard copy too, but it's uh, amazing. Um, some of these transatlantic packet mail, you know, all these different ways, you know, uh, the railway services, inland, um, you have so many different things. North Atlantic mail sailings, for anybody that does any kind of transatlantic stuff, you're gonna know Dick Winter's book. This one is a link to a PDF version of that. But what's really cool about it is it actually has revisions in it too. So this one is really, really important because I was working with Rick Livey on some covers and you know we were under the impression that something left a certain day or whatever, but then you hover over it and it's like, oh, it didn't leave that day because of uh, weather or whatever it might've been. So there have been a lot of revisions that have, uh, that have gone into that. And Dick Winter, you know, of course, you know, and any of his books are going to be, you know, great resources to look at. But a lot of them are online. Um, you know, the information's online. Right. Um, same thing with this kind of stuff. You know, we can get more and more specialized. Um, postal history is such a big umbrella. I mean, there's so many things under there, old stuff, new stuff, uh, whether it's airmail, whether it's Pony Express. We have, you know, we all like different things. So um, we have uh, an awful lot of uh, references just right here that can help you a lot. You know, airmail route maps, how cool is that, right? I mean, that's very good. Um, I, I'm building a platform actually right now to do some things in one of our challenges, and it's gonna take a little while to do, but if we can start a mass, massing, uh, a gathering enough uh, data, right? This big data concept, where a letter was mailed and where it ended up, how, how could it have gotten there, right? That's one of the things we're shooting for. It might take me a long time to get that together, but it's pretty cool. And this is one of the kind of things that we use with these airmail route maps. You know, and there's a lot of maps, of course, the Rumsey uh, uh, collection of maps uh, are very helpful and also help to illustrate presentations and exhibits. Postal markings, right? Postal markings, um, I, I don't know anybody that collects postal history that isn't frustrated with the American Stampless Cover Catalog um, for several reasons. One, it hasn't been updated in a really long time. Two, it only gives you some representative examples of the actual cancellations and markings you're looking for. There's some, and you're trying to think, well, there's this laundry list of text after it. So where does it fit? Where does it apply? So I, I think that there are people working on that now with the Classic Society, and hopefully the next edition of that is going to be uh, much more helpful. Kind of the same thing with the American Airmail catalog. There are many, many versions. I think they're up to like eight different 
versions of this now. I'm not positive, but I have the latest one, you know, and that's all good. But there are earlier versions that have been updated and corrected, and you can get some of those uh, inexpensively, and they still may be useful for you. So um, some of these others here that I have, uh, like I was pointing out Tom Clark, he has a three-volume set of Philadelphia postmarks. But you can find the same stuff in Maryland or any of these different kind of play, you know, different uh, cities, states, countries that you're interested in. There's some um, resources out there, and a lot of them I have uploaded onto my Bubble Up site. So if you're looking for something besides Pennsylvania, you may be able to find some of those too. Um, these are just a couple of the Facebook groups that I uh, know at least Charlie and I, we definitely participate in uh, literally on a all day, every day basis, right? We're, we're, we're in these groups all the time. So there's a couple there you'll be able to click on and you see if it's right for you. Some of them, uh, you're going to be frustrated because there's the, you know, I found this in my you know attic from my grandfather's house and how much is it worth? Uh, some sites are like that, right? You have to filter through to find out which ones are going to be uh, useful for you. But some of them really are. This U.S. Stamps for Advanced Collectors, 1847, 1938. That's a very, very good group. Um, I haven't seen a lot of spam or you know different things there. U.S. Stamp List covers some of those. They're, they're very good groups. So at least consider them if, if you are on Facebook. It's uh, worthwhile to spend your time there. Um, and some of these clubs and federations that we have, you know, these this Northeastern Federation, Southeastern Federation. I am working, I apologize, on the Mid-Atlantic Federation. I have a lot of irons in the fire right now and I need to put more work into that. But there's different federations that can be helpful and put on presentations um, where you can get a lot of good information too. All, all the links to all these places are there. And these genealogical societies, um, I, I, I just keep trying to uh, relate to these people, the historical and genealogical, and tell them, you know, we're basically doing the same thing with uh, maybe with different bits of paper. You know, we like certain, we like old paper. Maybe you um, don't care about the paper. Maybe you care about the letter, but not the cover, whatever it might be. But we're always looking for uh, information. That's for sure. Everybody wants the information to uh, be able to figure out what they're working with. So these are some great ones here. This uh, Genealogy Trails, very good site. I would definitely recommend it. There's a ton of good stuff on there. And, and the, most, these are all free. It's not, you know, you're going to find some that are sites that you have to pay for, but um, that, that one in particular, you don't. Um, these are some um, general search links, and some of them are, um, uh, you know, nationally known, like the National Archives, things like that. Library of Congress, very good library there to research a lot of things. Uh, Antiquarian Society. One of the things I definitely recommend, if you're, especially if you're not particularly enthused with Facebook, um, for Jola's board for Philatelist, very good. It's a lot of top-notch guys on there. You're not going to have any kind of spam or, you know, people asking silly questions. That's a great, great place. Highly recommend it. And he has a lot of things on his site, you know, where you can look at exhibits, you can browse covers, people upload things there that you can take a look at. And if you're looking, it's kind of like um, going to Siegel. Like if you have a cover and you say, oh, how many of these have sold? And, you know, you might, that's a great resource place to go look. Same thing with uh, Fajola's board. He's got tons of covers up there and you go and look and see. So um, this Postal History Sunday, for those of you that don't know Rob Fox, his last name is F-A-U-X. He's an amazing guy. He works, uh, does transatlantic covers. 24 centers are his specialty. He's had some um, very high award-winning um, exhibits, and he's just a down-to-earth regular guy. He was a college professor, PhD type, with, that um, taught in a university, and now he's a farmer. And he loves it, right? He loves farming and doing that stuff, but he writes this Postal History Sunday. And I don't know how many of you can say it, because I certainly can't, but he has done over 100 blog posts, <clears throat> you know, he's done one a week. And when I say he goes into detail, it's like what I had on, you know, when I showed that cover that I had, he goes into great detail and writes a great blog post about a cover every single week. And he's done it for more than two years. It takes a tremendous amount of discipline to do that and time. And he has a passion for it. And it's well worth reading, whether you're a beginning collector or an advanced collector, he, uh, 
he will speak to everybody within that range. And he actually even provides some challenges. He'll say, okay, now that you know about this, you know, go out and try and find this or whatever. So it's really fun to participate with. I, I really, I, I can't um, emphasize more of this postal history. It's just uh, Postal History Sunday. Just click on that link. Another great one for Pennsylvania, this whining history. It's, it's very, very good. It's just, it has nothing to do with postal history, but it's all about the history of Pennsylvania. This guy used to work at uh, one of the, I can't remember which museum. He does a really, really awesome job. So well worth taking a look at that link. And of course, um, you know, maps, all of us love maps and we get, it, it makes things a lot easier when you're researching to be able to visualize things. It's like, okay, uh, and especially if it's foreign, you know, it's like, do I really know where this was? I might know now, but do I know where what it looked like in 1850? Um, probably not, right? So some of these, you know, this David Rumsey map collection and some of these other panoramic maps, they're, um, these are free resources, you know, from Library of Congress. And, um, you know, this Rumsey one, some of them I think you have to pay for if you get certain sizes or prints or things like that. But there's still a lot of free resources in there. And it really helps me to visualize how things got from one place to another. So I really, uh, really like that one a lot. And uh, one thing I did here, um, I, I really didn't have any idea when I started this how many libraries there were. So I, I just did a search on philatelic libraries. Of course, everybody knows that APRL, right? We have that with the APS and, uh, you know, that's a great place to, to do a lot of things. But I didn't know about these other ones. There's Rocky Mountain and San Diego and some of the other ones. I know about the library company in Philadelphia only because they do Philadelphia stuff. But some of these other libraries are absolutely awesome and they have great resources. So they're worth checking. And I hope I, with all this, I know you guys have some resources out there. I would love to hear from you and add to this um, group of uh, stuff that I have in this PowerPoint, you know, and I'll put the links in there for everybody. So please let me know if you have some other ones. And um, it's almost um, impossible to research stuff without newspapers, especially when you're talking like transatlantic and things like that. They have dates that ships left and the dates that ships arrived. And, you know, the newspapers.com is very good in the U.S., but there are also sites, of, uh, you know, like the British Newspaper Archive and some of the others. And, um, you know, like John Barwis, if you guys have heard of him, he's written many books and, you know, very knowledgeable collector. He uh, goes to several newspaper sites and he doesn't want to pay for newspapers.com. You know, he's like, you don't have to do that. You can go here, here and here. So he gave me some other uh, great resources and, and things to look at. But I'll tell you one that I really, really love. This, this site, this early U.S. history, actually has the Niles Register on it. But this is a very valuable site, this early U.S. history. And Niles Register, has anybody heard of that? Just show your hands. Anybody heard of Niles Register? How about Frank Leslie's Illustrated Newspaper? A little more famous. Anybody heard of that one? Okay. These are great places for you guys to go. This Niles Weekly Register was from, uh, and I'm... Please forgive me if it's not exactly correct, but I think 1811 to 1849, they did a weekly newspaper about news all over the United States and went into great detail on individual states. All of it is online, all of it is free, and it's searchable. So if you're trying to research a Civil War cover or something like that, and you put in General John Smith or some name, it's going to come up. Right. So it's really cool. And it's really it's it's, it's easy to use and tremendous amount of uh, information that you can get from the Niles Register. Um, it's, it's it's very good. Uh, Frank Leslie's illustrated newspaper. That was kind of one along like Look Magazine. You know, they come out every week and it had, had people that went in the Civil War and actually had drawings and things um, and they would put them in there. You know, they weren't taking photos or whatever, but they were illustrating it. So please, please look at that one too. It's uh, very, very good and color, you know, some, some great color stuff and uh, some great uh, illustrations in there. All right, Philatelic literature, La Posta, can't, can't, can't uh, talk highly enough about that. It's a, a really awesome thing. I mean, they, they put out a tremendous amount of information and it's very, very good for postal history. It'll give you a ton of ideas and, and great uh, place to start. Inexpensive place. You'll see all the very top postal historian guys. They're all members of that because you just can't beat it. It's, it's very, very good. And uh, of course, in Pennsylvania, one of our guys, Phil Bansner, uh, awesome resource. 
And I'm going to tell you guys, I don't want to tell everybody. It's kind of like having easy pass. Like you don't tell other people about easy pass because you don't want them using it and going, well, it's the same with Phil. You know, he has books up there, very reasonable prices. And he has covers, a ton of Pennsylvania covers at very, very reasonable prices. And I kind of hate to tell people because it's like, oh, I, I want that to be there when I want it. Right. But for you guys, um, you know, definitely please check his site, Phil Bansner. Uh, he's been very supportive of the Pennsylvania Postal History Society, has a ton of information. He'd be happy to take a call from you. He'll, uh, you know, talk to him. He, he's a great, great resource. Um, some of the others that are great, and of course, uh, some of this is partly because of Charlie, you know, the Chronicle and the electronic library that the Classic Society has. Of course, there's tons of information there. You know, great place. Definitely have to be a member of the Classic Society. I mean, everybody, every stamp collector, once you go anywhere beyond the APS, um, that's probably the very first place that I would recommend that, you know, to join another organization. You're not going to beat the Classic Society for the value you get there. Awesome website. Uh, see that plug, Charlie, because he does the website too. I know some <laughs> award winning website. I'm sorry, I should say, right? And then, of course, um, for those of you from Pennsylvania, you probably know and heard of John Kay and Chester Smith. They've written books for other states, too. Any of their books are tremendous um, resources, uh, absolutely. And, and you can find those sometimes very reasonable. And uh, I actually have an extra Pennsylvania one. If somebody is interested, I'd be happy to sell it. Sometimes you sell for a fair amount, but um, I do have an extra one. So please let me know uh, for Pennsylvania uh, if you're interested in it. I'd be happy to work with you on it. And then, of course, organizations, you know, uh, we've talked about some of them. I'm not going to read off of this list, uh, except for the Philatelic Society of Lancaster County. I have to be honest with you. When I talk to other collectors all across the country, the very first thing I talk about is you got to be with these guys. you got to join us. you got to go here for 10 bucks. you got to do this, right? Because they have, you know, the value every two weeks, you're getting these great presentations and all different things going on. So I, I think it's absolutely awesome. And, uh, you know, right up there with some of the top clubs in the country. I, 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 we can't pull off what, what you guys do, you know, having this many people on Zoom meetings. It's, it's amazing. But there are some great places out here and resources. Um, to If you're specific about stuff, Carriers and Local Society, they have searchable things right on their website. It's amazing the amount of research that's been done. There's no point, like I said, to start from scratch. Go with what people have already done. You know, so it's um, the Collectors Club of Chicago. Also, they have several really good resources. For those of you that may have heard of or know Jim Milgram, he's uh, he is one crusty old guy, but he knows some stuff. I'm here to tell you that. Right? Now, I'll never, never even scratch the surface of what that guy knows. He all his books are there. Uh, tremendous, tremendous resources. He's, he's very good at what he does. So, you know, check out some of these other organizations and, and their websites. Um, as I was talking about Siegel, I don't think you can beat Siegel for their power search. It's amazing, you know, what you can look up and find and see what has sold there, what has been for sale, what the realized prices were, all different kinds of things. So that, that's a tremendous uh, resource right there. Of course, eBay and, um, you know, most people use eBay to some extent, may or may not really care for it. Hip stamps probably a little bit of a step above that. Their search engine is really, really good because it's more specific towards philatelic stuff. So I would definitely re recommend taking a look at hip stamp. And they're also just partnering now with the APS um, for a stamp store. They're going to start putting some items up on uh, hip stamp. So it's worth getting to know about those. Stamp auction network. Another great place to research stuff that's kind of an aggregator of a bunch of different uh, auction networks if you haven't done it. Jim Forte, Richard Fajola, those are great, great websites to go to and see what they have. Those guys have been doing it for years. A ton of information that they've already put up there. So take a look at those, please. And the museums and historical societies, I think we really need to support these places, right? Everybody talks about our hobbies not growing. Well, you know, part of it's because we have to support these uh, these different organizations that are helping us to grow. So when you get an opportunity, please go there. And there are some people that do tremendous research. You know, I'm an online guy. I do everything online. I have a hard time. I don't have the time to go to some of the, some of these places to do research. But there are some old time researchers. That's all they do is go to these type of places. Um, the place in Florida, uh, the Florida Postal Museum, I went there. They were absolutely awesome, very supportive. There was a lady that sat with me for about three hours researching stuff. I was doing an article on um, uh, stuff during the Seminole Wars, 
and she sat there with me for hours helping me through this. So you'll find some really great uh, people at these um, different societies and um, museums that would be more than happy to, to help you. So please take advantage of those, click on those. I, I just tried to grab some of the state historical uh, histories, postal history societies. It's not all inclusive. Please just uh, do a search. You'll find them if uh, you're looking for something. And there's always going to be somebody. We're, we're happy. I'll tell you, in Pennsylvania, if we get a, a, an inquiry or something, I'm happy to forward that on and help somebody to find um, something or get some information. Um, it, it's fun for us, right? We have the resources, so please uh, use them. Um, the post office actually has a lot of stuff online, too. Um, some really cool things. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the post office because you can find that stuff. But the last thing at the bottom, one of the things that's really, really cool is the American Philosophical Society. And in conjunction with the post office, they have their Ben Franklin's ledgers when he was the postmaster of Philadelphia. They actually have his ledgers there. And you can go in and see all these things. And one of the things that they asked us for a couple of years ago, and COVID kind of slowed, put us to a halt on that because we couldn't interact with them the way we wanted to, is for them, when they research something, they're, they're, they're smart. They're young people. They're really smart with big data, right? So they say it goes from Philadelphia to London. As we know, as postal historians, nobody's going to say something went from Philadelphia to London. No. How did it go? Did it go through New Jersey? Did it go through New York? Did it go through Boston or Baltimore? Did it go to Southampton? Did it go, you know, Portsmouth? Where we have questions, right? And we have some answers too, right? We know how to research those answers. So we can be very helpful to those people. They're trying to make sense of those ledgers and they, they would love to have the help at the American Philosophical Society. I would just, if you have any interest in that with Ben Franklin stuff, it's um, very specific, but it's it's also really good. And it'll uh, they're working on um, stuff to, for 2026. You know, that's going to be a big year for them. So they would appreciate any help if, if you guys are in Philadelphia or interested in that type of stuff with Ben Franklin. Right. Um, I highlighted Retro Reveal. Charlie put a thing up there. Retro Reveal. I had no idea how much I depended on Retro Reveal. And what this is, is just it was a free site that was sponsored by the University of Utah. And I'm really actually working now to find um, a, a substitute for it. I have a developer friend that's actually working on it. So um, I think we're going to be able to do it. But um, there are a couple sites out there right now that are I, I really can't recommend them because I have to be honest with you, the sites, uh, they just don't do what Retro Reveal did. It was amazing. And Charlie demonstrated it. I think you guys saw where there were several postmarks on top of each other. Well, you can separate them by color and all that. And you can actually find out all those different postmarks. So it's, it's, it's really cool. I hope we can get back to it. So um, the bubble up thing, I would highly recommend everybody looking at it. And please email me. I'll send you my link. You can join there. You can have your own free account there if you want to do that. Um, it's, it's great. Um, these other electronic libraries, they, they're self-explanatory. This one here, Omeka.net, that's something you guys aren't probably going to be familiar with, but it's actually made for uh, museums to, um, uh, to keep track of all the stuff that they have, right? But I have a site there, and I'll, I'll show you real quick at the end just to give you a screenshot of it. Um, I have an Eli, Eli Beatty stuff. And I put some of the covers up there just to show you guys what it looks like. It's very, very low cost, and it's a way for you to chronicle your collections, too. So we'll look at that a little bit. Um, some of these things like the Swedish Tiger and stamp plating, those are also great sites to go to. Or you could just ask your buddy, Charlie. I don't know. He probably knows it off the top of his head. <laughs> Not me. But uh, there's some great ones there. Uh, Stamp Smarter is also a great site, too, with a ton of information you can find out about, um, you know, stamps and, and other things there. So this is the Omeka.net. This is what it looks like. And this is, I, I actually have a version that I pay for. It's its not very expensive at all. But just to, to show you what one looks like here, uh, you know, you can actually put, I, I do mine. And this is something I don't know if we need, like, a, a convention for naming things. My convention is... I do the year and then the month and then the day because when I sort through stuff, I have hundreds and hundreds of these, right? So I had to try and find them. I had to figure out some kind of way that was meaningful to me. Um, this is not very meaningful because it says Baltimore, Maryland, fate. Charlie, I'm sure, is very familiar with this because it's part of the scrap stuff, you know, where uh, somebody tried to um, say that something was something that it wasn't, right? But it, 
we don't need to go into detail on that. But I have 70 things that are up there. This Hagerstown bank correspondence just to have a representative thing. But people can actually click on each of those and they expand and they get bigger and you can get more information about them. You know, the thing that's really important is to be able to find stuff is using tags and categories, things like that. You know, the more you put in, the more you're going to get out when you search for it. So that's, um, it, but it's worth uh, making the effort. And I would highly recommend it. at least go get, get, get a free account. You know, that, that's, that's cool. So that's uh, most of the stuff I have. And uh, one of the things you'll notice here, um, and I'm not trying to plug anything really. It's just, um, I'm starting this platform called philatelic.academy and it's going to have some, some free and some paid courses on it. It's going to have different ways for people to display collections presentations and exhibits and hopefully at some point you know we're going to include dealers in there for a, a kind of a paradigm shift in how they're selling some of their stuff and also for potentially one of my goals is to do is to have digital exhibits right now you know we're kind of stuck with uh, people can't get to different places and you know i know everybody enjoys the way we exhibit now but i just want there to be more opportunities out there for digital exhibits so we're working towards trying to do um some of that um, and you know make it become a reality so that's uh my main presentation i'm sorry i, I just rambled on through it all but as you go through this please go through page by page it's it's worth a few minutes of your time to <laughs> So if that's okay, can we open up to any questions or comments or anything? a round of applause for our good friend, Steve Kennedy, who's oh, put thanks. an amazing resource together. You are very kind in giving plugs to this group and the society, but I got to tell you, Steve, you've done a great job oh. of consolidating. Every time I look at one of your presentations, I find new, new information and new resources sure. and I need to add them to our three sites sure. that I'm of dealing course. with. It's just yeah, phenomenal. Of yeah, we'd be, yeah, I see most of this stuff, like I said, I'll invite everybody to the to the one that I've already got with Bubble Up. I mean, don't be afraid of it. I know there's people that, that think, oh, this site isn't a safe site or whatever. It, I haven't had any issues with it. don't know anybody that has. And there's a ton of stuff. And, and it's searchable. All you do is put in your search term. You're going to get, you know, hits back with um, the things you're looking for. Well, I think one of the things you definitely share with us, too, is that a lot of this stuff is out there and it costs nothing. It, yeah, it, it is exactly. out there and more and more material is being scanned and imaged and put online. And if you can search appropriately within Google or any other search engine, it, it is amazing. And you've done a great job of consolidating that. And I'm trying to keep up with you on the Empire State Classics and on, even on our site to make sure we've got those resources. And it's always still nice to have a book on your library shelf, right, sure. to have the paper in front of you. But for a quick little reference, right, Steve, you can go to some of these that are digitized and online and still have sure. it at your fingertips, too, and, right? So that's important as yeah. well. Right, well, the problem with books is, too, is there are some limited editions, you know, like right. there's some things out there that, you know, they only made 50 of them or 100 of them. And it's really difficult to get them and or they're very expensive. So if you have the opportunity to get a digital version of it, me personally, I have to tell you, as I get older, my eyes aren't quite as good. I love, I have, I have two 32 inch monitors sitting next to each other here. I can make this stuff as big as I want to, you know, I don't have to, you know, try and squint and look in, in these small type books and things like that. And um, that, that's very, very helpful for me. I, that's, that's why I started really getting into it. Agree. Any questions, please. I, I should stop talking and let you ask a few. I see Dick, you've got your hand raised and he's yes, giving sir. you a high five. Please. <laughs> Oh, you're, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I want to do, uh, to thank Steve for the presentation. Uh, and one thing I, I think you could have put more emphasis on was that of philatelic libraries. Um, you don't want to over, <clears throat> don't want to overlook them. We've got one almost, one of the biggest ones in the world in our backyard in, in Belfond with the APRL. Um, and, and also reach out to your fellow collectors that may have a book you can use in their library. Um, yeah, I agree with you, Dick, and we should call you out because I saw your photograph on the steps at the APRL, yeah. and we thank you for that because we know you were up there doing that volunteer, and that was great, and you're absolutely right. We, we don't probably plug them enough. We don't use them enough, and our own, this group here has references that we're more than happy to share amongst our members. I, I could 
box up and send you or drive you a whole batch of references if you're interested. And we've got that library and we have another one that's coming very soon as Paul knows, and I'm just finishing inventorying that as well. And we'll be able to put that out there. It's pretty significant. So I didn't mean to cut you off, Dick, but I think you're absolutely right. Please continue. No, that's okay. And I was going to say another source um, is, is a place called bookfinder.com. Um, you know, they, they're kind of like an Amazon, but it's all books. And uh, there's a, a huge, they have hundreds of thousands of books. Um, in fact, when I, when I do my volunteer work at the APS, at the APRL, um, and we're pricing books, that's one of the sources that we use to find out what a, a you know, a, a retail price of a book is. And then we set the APS uh, price uh, from that quite a bit lower, but uh, that's one of the sources that we use. They've got an amazing amount of things. You can search by, by author, by title, by subject. Um, it's just an amazing site. And they're very affordable as well to, to only be in a few dollars, right? I know the Philatelic Classic Society, I guess, just decided to donate the rest of our books to the APS and they're in the library as well. And all you need to do is like pay shipping and you can get these books for like $5 and 95 cents. So there's some phenomenal resources out there. Yeah. Like, I would agree with you. And the importance, just to tack onto that, the importance of having your own Philatelic library. Um, you know, based on whatever it is you collect, if you get into some new new uh, new area, uh, you know, start acquiring books. Um, books don't, in, in the end, books don't cost a heck of a lot of money. And uh, the, the information they have is just outstanding, absolutely outstanding. Well, it's funny that you say that because I've gotten probably about a half a dozen transatlantic um, reference books. The thing you have to, the other tip is you have to read them. <laughs> you know, I try to find the time to do it and, and, and get into them as much as I can. And I wish I had more time to do it. You know, instead of just picking and choosing little bits and pieces, I want to read the whole thing. But some of these books are really huge, you know, Dick Winter's books. And, uh, and once you get into Transatlantic, there's a ton of different ones that are very valuable. But man, it's hard to read them all. Let me echo too with Steve, because this is a great resource, you know, and you mentioned our websites as well, and we've done a fairly good job. So you'll have access to Steve's presentation with all the hyperlinks. We have also, as Steve alluded to, also on our website, have a page with links, and most of these are there. And if they're not, they will be soon, because, you know, Steve always, like I said, every time I see another presentation of Steve's, I get 10, 15, 20 new ones. So we try to cross-reference. He's doing the same on the Pennsylvania Postal History Society. I'm trying to do the same here at the Empire State and at the Classics. So there's a lot of resources and he's consolidated here. If you click on any of those and you find them, they're invaluable. I think you'll have a, you'll have a really good time doing a deep dive. It is amazing what is actually out there and available to us. Uh, I still like going to a library once in a while, but the fact that you can do it on your computer is great. So Jim, did you have a question? I see a hand raised in mic. Yeah, please. Yes. Uh, one site I find very useful all the time is the auction sites. I, I go to uh, Seagulls a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I have something that's similar, because they do such an excellent description, if you got a, a close match, you're, they've done hours of work already for you. Yeah. I would agree with you, Jim. You're right. I think Steve mentioned past Seagulls Power Search, for example. If you've got an item and, you know, you can, you can search decades in the past, right? Sometimes get an image and a really good description, which really helps hone in on what you're looking at. And there are other sites like that as well to help you triangulate on what you're, tr what you're looking at, right? So, right, Steve? I mean, you can, Absolutely. You can tack on to that. So. That's, one, that's one of the best. And I'll tell you one thing that's going to be really cool, and it's going to be coming here, and it won't be too long, maybe next year, but there there's some auction sites and other um, philatelic organizations that are using AI now, artificial intelligence, to recognize stamps and different postal markings and things like that to help you uh, know where it came from, you know, all, all the different parts about it. And there are some auction companies, I, I can't say which ones, but they have spent a lot of money doing this, right? So they realize the value in it. And it's going to be really cool for us here before too long, where you're going to be able to use your phone and hold it over things and find it, you know, and, and identify those things. Instead of going to your Scott catalog, it's going to say, yeah, that's a Scott number, blah, blah, you know, this, that. And, you know, that's pretty cool. So I would agree. I'm the other thing that, that we can't forget too, right, Steve? I mean, we're looking at all of our fellow collectors here. 
who have a wealth of information in a very diverse area, right, of collecting. And so it's amazing when I reach out to colleagues when I am stumped with something and the responses that you get. So I also urge folks, while we have all these resources too, is never forget to at least maybe first reach out to yourself or I'm going and look at everybody here and everybody has got an area of specialty that they would be more than happy to share. Uh, nine, 99% of the time, I very rarely find someone that says, no, I'm not going to share what I know about that cover of stamp. Everybody's sure. pretty giving. So you just have to ask, right? And folks will be able to. So, sure. yeah. Any other questions for Steve? Steve, please keep going. I mean, this is very, very useful uh, overview. Just great work. Well, well, the only thing I can say is just please send me uh, resources. I, I'll just keep piling it on, you know, and we'll make this as big as we can, and you know, free and easy for everybody to use. So, so it, and everybody does, you know, what I'd love to do sometime is, and, and I'd like to capture like a workflow. And I started doing that on my own because like I said, I'm working on this, this platform and I have to explain what I do to a developer. And I don't know if any of you guys have worked with developers, right? I have in the past on different projects. Mm -hmm. You have to be very specific because you can't assume that they know what you know that what you know when it comes to postal history or stamps or even the different terms that we use. So I'm very specific. I look this up here, I do this there, and then I do this. And, and I think it's worthwhile sometimes to look at some of the ways you do things and talk about it with other people because there may be quicker and easier ways to do what you're doing. And I think that would be a great presentation at some point too, like to um, how to be most efficient, you know, in, in what you're doing. What's the very best resource to go to first, you know, you, and uh, just help people get through the process a little more quickly. Uh, I think if you like, I don't know, like Charlie doing tens and elevens or whatever, it's like, well, what's your process? Do you have a checklist? And some of you guys probably already have that kind of stuff. What are you actually looking for? Share that with people, please, and help help make it more efficient for them when they have to do the same thing. All right, Steve, I got the hint. I'll send you my <laughs> checklist on how I plate the three cent 1850. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't even get into those. Come and write you know. to <laughs> uh, all I do is I take your word for it and say, hey, this one says Philadelphia, it's worth this one. Okay, yeah. Well, when, when you look, at, <laughs> yeah. You know, when you look at the hundred thousand of those over 40 yeah. years, you kind of, yeah, yeah, it's but very good. Steve. I'm a big checklist guy, it's really yeah. important. So if you can capture some of the things you're doing, you really may be able to help somebody down the road with that. Well, I want to stress what you started with, because I think that's important from a post history aspect. Your first set of slides really was, you know, looking at a cover, right? Then we've had right. those lectures before and kind of where do you start to diagnose it and break it apart? And you just have to go through it. I think you're right in a logical way, right? You start with the cancel, you start with the, the, the rate, you look at the addressee, you look at any other markings. And if you just document that the way you sort of led right, let off the talk. It's amazing once you start doing that. Uh, and then the interior, how you really build the story, and there it is, right, of how it went from A to B to C to D to E. And there's the story. You just, you're a postal historian. You just right. explained it, right? Yeah. And I think that's really important to go that way. And the thing is, too, two things that I'd like to make uh, point out real quickly. Once you've done something like what I'm showing up here right now, you really have a short article. Right. So you can you can make an article pretty quickly. And the other thing, um, one word that's kind of been near and dear to my heart, and I'd like to, to I don't know, maybe if you guys have some input on it, the word legacy. Like, so what's your legacy within this hobby? Right. We know Charlie's going to be known for 10s and 11s. Right. Everybody's going to know him for that, even though he has many other interests. OK, but maybe you have something transatlantic, whatever it might be. Um, but to save it for other collectors behind you. And even for your family, kids, you know, people to know what you had. You can put on your personal stuff like I bought it at this auction. I paid this much for it, whatever. But you have this stuff here. It would be so much easier than your family someday if something happens to you, you know, going and looking at this shoebox full of stuff. Uh, how much, is, which ones are worth $1, $10 and $1,000? They're never going to know, right? Unless you document this stuff. That would be a great legacy right there just to, to put the effort into that, you know, in, in addition to all you learned in the process. So I think those are those are important things, too, because it's not like you have catalog. I mean, this American Stamplist cover catalog, you can say all you want about that, where it's got prices in there. It's from 30 years ago, right? Those are relative prices or whatever. So nobody tells you how much covers are worth. And, and I actually, and I'll tell you one, too, and, and Dick, you, you'll know who I'm, maybe who I'm talking about. 
But I actually uh, got called out because there was a collection that a cover came from. And I'll tell you, it was Steve Washburn, right? He had this cover. He knew everything about this cover. I didn't know it about it, right? So when I offered him, he said he was taking an offer on that cover. I didn't make an intelligent offer to him because I didn't know about the background of the cover. It came, you know, the provenance, you know, that it came from a famous collector. And it was a really important piece. And here I am saying, well, I don't know. It says, this is how much this stamp is on cover. I look at my Scott catalog and I say, okay, well, I'll offer a little bit more than that. I think the word he used is like a Yahoo or something. He called me some kind of thing. I don't know. And it was fine. And it really hit home, though. I really need to do my research. If I would have put the guy's name in that had the collection and I would have found out, hey, these covers are selling not for $20 or $25. They're selling for $50 or $60, right? Uh, I would have I would have known a little bit better, but nobody tells you, you know, and uh, that's helpful to talk to other collectors and see what their experiences are and how much these things should cost. Guys on eBay, I don't know. Uh, you guys can tell me what you think, but most dealers, I think they're just making up prices. They buy stuff from people and they say, oh, well, yeah, this has this, you know, this, this, this. And, you know, they've done it so long. They say, this is how much I'm going to charge for it. Who says it's worth that? <laughs> you know, there's nothing, there's no definitive thing. So it's wide open for interpretation. The more you know, the better uh, consumer you're going to be. So Thank you, I don't Steve. want, I don't want them to call me a Yahoo. No, no, this, <laughs> listen, this is why we're here, <laughs> Steve, right? I got to do my research. You're transitioning better. us into, you know, show, tell, and ask, which is what yeah. we kind of do, right? So any sure. other questions for Steve or comments or thoughts? Again, you know, uh, uh, it's a great resource because, you know, Steve's coming back. He'll be here in another month or so. Believe me, he's got another great talk coming. But for this one, any other thoughts, comments, anything you want to share before we close out this first session? I, I really cool. appreciate, Steve, you taking the time. So so just an end note on what you're talking about. Please. I'm going to be coming back for talk about the Eli Beatty stuff. So if you guys wouldn't mind just checking in your collections, see if you have any Eli Beatty stuff. Um, I, I can almost bet that you do. <laughs> you very, know, very I do, common. Steve. You know, Steve, yeah. I have at least one or two. I got to oh, get them to you. I got to get them to you. There's, <laughs> there's so many. You know, so there are. please take a look. You'll be surprised. Yeah, let's give Steve a round of applause again. Thank please you. just really appreciate it. If you want to, you can stop sharing when you can, Steve, and we okay. can move on I to this. But really, again, again, thank you so much, Steve. Really appreciate Thanks. it. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Steve. Thank that you. Was good. Get us all, uh, I guess, our philatelic juices flowing to do a little research, and we're looking forward to having you back in a couple months. So thank you again. And for those of you